team, first of all, the filmmaker Russell Brown, writer and director. He has directed uh, five narrative features, two feature documentaries, several short films as well, Search Engines, Annie and the Gypsies, Karen Black on acting, other films, and uh, let me introduce uh, then um, the leading actor, Kelly Blatz, actor and filmmaker. He's been on a number of TV shows and recently completed his feature directorial debut. And finally, the star of the movie, the great Jacqueline Bissett. Right? And really, thank Jacqueline for joining us. Her many films earlier include A Bullet, Airport, Day for Night, The Deep, Murder on the Orient Express, Under the, Under the Volcano, Rich and Famous, Class, La Ceremonie, Dancing on the Edge, many others. So, thank you. Why don't, why don't, yes, why don't Jacqueline, why don't you here, sit down here, very good. So I'm wondering. Can I just say? say go go thank ahead. You, thank you for coming. It's, is it turned on? Oh, <laughs> detail. <laughs> right. Is it? No. There you go. Here we go. Here, no, it is. No, it's. Okay. No, it's. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So I'm curious about just in Once terms of... To, I want to be able to see Kelly when I'm talking. <laughs> okay. In, in putting this together, I mean, was there a lot of interplay among all of you? Um, did the actors have input into the script? Did they have suggestions? Was it drawn at all from some of their real, your real experiences? Uh, the, the movie's pretty much what was in the script, I mean, before we started shooting. I mean, it, it's, it was pretty tightly, tightly scripted. But how did, it, how did it start out? I mean, you and Jacqueline, I understand, had known each other beforehand. I mean, did you write it with her in mind? Did you wanted her to play it? I, I didn't really write it with her in, my, in mind. I didn't really write it with anybody in mind. So I, I was just sort of imagining that character. And uh, yeah, but then, you know, once it became apparent that <laughs> Jacqueline was supposed to play the part, it was, it, was pretty, it was pretty clear to me that I was in good hands. Right. So what appealed to you about it? Uh... Everything. <laughs> it's a wonderful script. It was just, just a trip to read it and I, I just, you know, you when it's so good and you complex and so many words, you think, well, am I, can I do a good job? And so it took me a minute or two to to jump in, but um, I felt very confident about Russell. I'd met Russell via my friend Christopher Munch, who had directed the, the Sleepy Time Gal, which is one of my favorite films, as this one is. These two films really stick out to me, uh -huh. what the best parts I've had. So um, I had so much respect for Christopher and his friendship with Russell just seemed very organic. And I always liked hanging out with them as just the socially the little bits we hung out. And I felt they were like, we're in the same clan, not the clan, what's the word? Um, when you feel like certain people, you fit into each other's worlds. What's it called? Collective tribe. Tribe. Yeah, I felt like we were all sort of in the okay. same tribe, and after the same excellence, and not overly concerned with financing reasons. I mean, for them, of course, to have to raise the money to do it, and blah blah blah. But in terms of acting, and I just felt like we were, you know, as bit guerrilla filmmaking in a way, but with great substance and uh, satisfaction built in, and also human beings who I respect. All those elements could, you know, add up. And having spent a long time in Hollywood, I've mixed feelings about some people. 
and um, generally I've had fairly been treated reasonably well, but I just thought it would be a positive experience and I really wanted to play this slightly dingy woman. Um, I, I did have worries because I felt like, I knew I couldn't play the young part. Makeup can do so much, <laughs> but not that. <laughs> and I thought, well, she's the character who makes Kelly's role interesting because she was a query and she had a good career, but Kelly, uh, Kelly's character, obviously not Lauren, meets her as an image. So I had to join in, find my way to find her in the later part of her life, which wasn't absolutely clear to me. And I was really holding on, hoping to hold on to any moment of dizziness or zaniness or anything. And there weren't that many that I could follow through with that young character's um, personality. So all those, everything became very valuable. And when I met Kelly on stage, I just felt such a sense of relief because he was just incredibly present. And it's so unusual to be, I haven't met, I've worked with a lot of great stars and stuff, sure. and I haven't met people who are as present. And um, he, we listened, we really listened to each other, and I felt we were extremely, um, I don't know, compatible, mm -hmm. interested in each other's lives, and I was interested in him also as a person. He's a young filmmaker. I saw one of his films, and uh, just just got a great, he's intelligent, super intelligent, talked about some of the films he liked. I saw him interacting with Russell's cats. <laughs> it was very meaningful to me. I love cats and I like people who like cats. I get a lot of readings on that. And I, are we, and then of course Russell put them in, those cats are in the movie. <laughs> Learning to act, no less. And um, I'm talking too much. Ask the question. Yes. Else. Let's ask first. <laughs> Maybe Russell, how did you come to Kelly? And then Kelly can talk a little bit about uh, his experience doing the movie. It's, it's funny about Kelly because when people ask about the movie, I always say that the hardest part of making this movie in the 80s, easiest part about making the movie was casting Kelly because we had looked for so long to find an actor to play Lauren and it just, we weren't f having luck. And it just, it was really, we just didn't, never found, and I thought that we were gonna just not make the movie because hmm. half the movie is, you know, Lauren. And then Kelly came in and just gave the most uncanny, great, incredible audition. And I was just, it's funny if you watch the audition tape, I, he, he did the first audition and I, you hear me off camera going like, how did you know how to do that? Like, <laughs> You did, like, you just, I've never, it was really strange. I've never had an audition like that where someone just so embodied the part from the beginning. It was very, it was very obvious to me that he was the guy. Right. And, and, and from your point of view, Kelly, what appealed to you about this role and what were the biggest challenges in playing it? Well, I think Russell's heard this a lot, but um, when I read the script, which is very rare, I felt like I, I had I understood it so well, and I I had to play this part uh, within the first few scenes, and so when I went to the audition, I, I I kind of felt like I was I was supposed to to play this part, which is very rare. Most parts you you know you come in and and then you leave and you never hear back. But uh, but the words were so wonderful, and and it's very rare to have a, a film like this that is two people talking essentially the whole time, almost reads more like a a play. And uh, I just loved the words, and I, I felt like I understood it. And I'm a young filmmaker as well, and I felt like I understood that aspect of, of the part. And uh, then I met Russell, and uh, he felt the same, uh, lucky for me. And then I had to go through a, a vetting process with Jacqueline, which was terrifying. Oh, so uh, difficult. <laughs> I, had to, I had to read with her, and, and, sh and she approved, and, and then we went, went for it. Right. So now, did you follow? Was it all scripted, or did Every you word. each? Okay. Did did you have suggestions though for Russell on the script? Well, there were things I wanted to do less of, like um, sing. <laughs> and I said, I, you know, my 
singing is limited, and um, I had, there was a time in my life when I used to do voice lessons and I had got my voice into a good place, but I didn't feel it, that it relevant. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to act it. I didn't want to sing. I Just the minimum of singing. I think Russell was thinking, maybe I can get her on board for this, but I'm not. He gave up fairly fast, right? I mean, the singing that happens in the movie is, is really what needed to happen, which is, the intention was always that the the song that is in the first act has a whole different meaning by the time that they sing it in the third act. So it's, you know, it's sort of exuberant and fun in the first act, and it's the same words later, but it, it has a whole different feeling. So it sort of suggests the whole transition of the movie. So well, that I loved. I mean, at that part, the way he wound it into the story, yeah, I was so moved by that. Was um, you know, this uh, deals with a lot of issues about actresses in Hollywood and uh, fewer parts over the years. I mean, did it touch you in a personal way in, in that sense of what actors of a certain age have to go through? And then, of course, dealing with mortality well, also. Well, all those things, yeah. But I don't have a real sense of myself of being the age I am. And so I sort of blunder <laughs> through that. I don't, I don't put that center stage because I feel I'm many ages and I feel like I've been through a lot of life and I can play a lot of different things. It's just a matter of somebody wanting me to do it. And then with the, if I believe they want me to do it, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm, I feel ready. I'm not frightened. Uh -huh. and, and how do you look back on, as, as the character looks back and talks about certain roles and certain of her, her personal relationships? I mean, does that um, touch a nerve with you as well? Well, it wasn't a nerve. No, I mean, it's a pleasure of some of the stories that I tell in detail. Uh, the fact that anybody's listening is such a pleasure. And, Russell's way of writing and going into quite detailed, emotional, verbalizing detailed thoughts and stuff. You don't get to do that very often. I'm all for that. I love right. that stuff. You know, and traveling to, um, what's the name of the country I travel to? Bhutan. Bhutan. I mean, that little section, I always wanted to go to Bhutan. Um, so <laughs> the story that she had about Bhutan was a kind of rough story, but the way Russell wrote it, it was delicious and it was detailed and I mean, I've just lived, I feel like I've been there now. I do feel like I've been there and the wind mm -hmm. and the heat and the, the incredible incantations in that place where the monks and all that. I mean, it's just, it's very, very alive for me. And I've always liked talking about travel. And I used to, mm -hmm. when I was at school, people would come back from holidays. Some of the rich people at school, there were a few kids who had more money than others. And they would come back and say, I just was in, I was just in London, I was just in Paris, whatever. And I said, tell me about it. And they said, oh, it was nice, it was just lovely, we had a lovely time. And I thought, bloody hell, that's not good enough for me. I want to hear, what you, I want to hear about it in detail. I want to know, tell me about it. And I'm like that, you know, this is my personality. I want to know stuff in detail. So I'd say, well, when you left your house, what were you wearing? How did you get to the bus station? How did you get to the train station? What happened? What did you eat? What was it like? What did you see? What did you smell? Everything. I want to know everything. And they'd look at me like, you're not actually going to listen to me going on. I'm like, yes, that's me. That is my personality. I want the detail. And I'm patient and I want to hear it. And I live, I mean, and Russell was doing that in his script. And I God, I mean, I have memories of one girl who had had a, some kind of sexual affair when she went to France. We were absolutely, absolutely mind-boggling to hear someone who was probably 15 or 14 at that time telling us about this first sexual encounter. I mean, I thought this was the most incredible story. And we were all absolutely aghast hearing the story that actually happened to a person we knew. And, and so it went on in my life. And, so, and I'm lo always looking for people who tell the details of their life. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were the challenges of, of getting the film made? It's not a conventional movie. Um, did you, how did you put together the financing once you had your ideas about the cast? And were you concerned about, or were financiers concerned about, would, would there be an audience for a movie like this? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I think every you know everyone was concerned, but it's you know it's it, for for an independent even for an independent movie, it was an inexpensive or relatively inexpensive movie. So you know you put together a couple hearty souls who want to help out with the financing, and and you make you you know you make it by hook or by crook, and that's kind of what we did. Right. I mean, the the real challenge is you know when you when you're making a movie with this much dialogue and you're doing you know these really chunky dialogue scenes and you're you don't have a lot of time. It's hard on your cast, really. I mean, Kelly, maybe you want to talk about, like... Well, you asked about the challenges, and, you know, really the only one for me was to, um, because there was so much dialogue, we were doing 15 to 20 minute takes, um, uh -huh. and that's pretty unusual uh, in a film. Um, so I would say just, just needed to keep up uh, that energy uh, throughout the day with that dialogue, but otherwise, I mean, I just got to sit and look at Jacqueline Bissette uh, all day and eat food. I mean, <laughs> you, you didn't have to pay me to do that. Right? Um, um, it's pretty awesome to do this kind of a film. But Russell was wearing most peculiar outfits, kept me laughing. <laughs> and he said it was because it was he was cold or he was hot, whatever. But I used to see him arrive, and I was so amused by he the way he dressed. And I know he's a very serious filmmaker, but it kept me amused. And Paul Sand also, who was wonderful, I thought, in playing the, the um, waiter. Right. It was just wonderful. But those elements of humor just made me feel like I was on a, you know, just riding a, a wild horse into the countryside. It was a good feeling. Right. I mean, you've done... Uh, you know, big budget movies with large casts and special effects and all of that. And then this is, a, I guess, a, an opposite extreme of a very intimate kind of movie. I mean, have you enjoyed both? Or is this, I much prefer this. You prefer this? Much prefer this. It's a role. I mean, there's no comparison. Right. You know, uh, no comparison. That's the Sleepy Time Gal on this one, Rich and Famous, and a few others, where they stand out to me because there's really a substantial role. and and. At this point in my life, um, people are not talking so much about the way I look, which I think at times has made it difficult for me to play the kind of roles. I always saw myself basically as a character actress, and um, I wasn't frightened of it. I think that's why I've survived, because I feel that's what my fun level is. Uh -huh. and, um, and so the physical thing of always having to be glamorous and stuff, I think you can be glamorous in a different way as you're older, but it's not the key thing in the story. So, you know, he could have cast many women, many actresses could have played this part, I feel, and done a great job because it's got a lot of truth to it and it, to the aspects of it that are pretty much probably true of what most people go through to some degree. They don't always have the difficult personality that she had in the beginning, I think. Uh -huh. But I think she, Rose is luckier than some because she, met, she meets um, Lauren. Right. And she right. loves Lauren. She grows to love him. There's a love story, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know the film has been shown at a number of film festivals. Um, we, some of us had seen it at Santa Barbara last year, and you've been around at other festivals with it, I know. It, has that been satisfying? Have you had encouraging audiences um, at those screenings? Yeah, I mean, the, the movie, uh, the movie's, it's been great. I mean, the festival, you know, COVID shut down film festivals for a long time. So yes. you go to festivals down, people are super happy to be there. And uh, it's been really fun. And, you know, I love my cast, you know, and we, they love, and we just had like a little, it's lucky how it worked out that we all got along so well. And we like going on the road together and showing the movie. And so it's, it's actually been a total pleasure to do that. Yeah. Kelly, do you feel that way back? Yes, I do. I agree. <laughs> no, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. It's we, it's been I think over a year now. We've been touring it around, right. and we're going to New York next weekend. And I mean, they're just we've become such great friends. You know, we shot this film three year, three years ago, four years ago. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, that's been the most rewarding thing actually for me has been the the friendships and the relationships with right. the, with them both right. from the film. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have some questions? Uh, from the audience here. Um, yes. Not 
critic sort of thing about it. It was absolutely wonderful. And I was very amused and intrigued when you wrote in the part about how um, the actress Jacqueline uh, was saying that she could do have done a better job had the director not directed that certain way of speaking fast. I thought that was brilliant to bring that in from a di director's point of view, yeah. um, complimenting the actress. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I don't know where that came from, but she, it's the part where she's saying, uh, you know, uh, in the mirror, when, when he told her to look no, at me. No, no, when he... Or when she said <laughs> faster. He asked him to speak faster, right? Oh, yeah. could have done a better and, job. Yeah. 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 I thought that was amazing. And as far as the whole movie was concerned, I was just amazed how brilliant it was. And the acting, unbelievably great. And generally, uh, your part, I was trying to think of other actors and actresses and movies that I've seen and uh, that have really two people in it. And one was Sleuth with Richard, uh, uh, with... Um, Lawrence Olivier and, and Michael Caine, Sleuth. And um, the other was, as far as an actress, um, uh, Vanessa Redgrave, um, is the type of actress I would have seen playing your role, but maybe not as good as the way you did it. <laughs> well, that's a compliment. <laughs> Vanessa Redgrave is one of my, yeah, she's a great actress on stage and in film, and a great, interesting woman, too. Right, yeah. Uh, definitely. So, um, yes. Now my eyes are going to water. And I said, that's just the tears in my eyes. The love from the right from the start was so strong. The love. So we're talking about it also from you. I mean, you just feel this love between you. And, uh, you know, then I come back to your writing and which, which, did you know that they were going to have such, it, it was just so real and so beautiful. You can feel the love between them. Yes, and, yes. yes, so, 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 so much. And that's why you say many actresses, I think. Well, I think because, of course, they're lovely, beautiful, wonderful actresses. I can't imagine being in the room and everybody being so right from the first moment. I have a, a quick story about this, actually. Okay. So we, we had done a, uh, an audition with Jacqueline and another actor, and she sort of pulled me aside. And, you know, Jacqueline is incredibly polite and diplomatic. <laughs> And she said, um, Russell, in, in cinema, chemistry is incredibly important. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I was like, I guess that means there was no chemistry. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It is. But then you think that your writing did that. And I find this all very, very fascinating because you gave her the words to work with, but she has it. Okay. Um. Well, it's a, you find the elements, and also when you were working with someone like Kelly, it was not difficult, honestly. No, I can, I can All right, I, we don't want to have this be a, just a conversation with you. Sorry. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but let me ask. I mean, you you sort of touched on this, but um, dealing with someone coming to terms with her not only age, but uh, impending mortality. Did this touch a nerve for you? You said you don't think about aging that much, but I would think you couldn't avoid it entirely playing a part like this. Well, you, you see, in her attitude, even in the last section, yeah. she has an attitude towards it all. She's got a, she's, she's, of course she's not happy about it, but she's got a plan mm -hmm. in her mind. She's very positive. She doesn't leave, and she doesn't, you don't know what's going to happen at the right. end. Maybe, right. she'll, maybe she'll survive. I mean, I don't know whether she's right. going to survive. Who knows what's going to happen? But she doesn't want to spread dreary uh, thoughts. So she, she's had a strong backbone, and I think she passes it on on a level. I love what she says to his character. 
What does she say? Stand, stand tall. What does she say? Russell, when she said, uh, be an artist and live in. Live but there's one other one phrase. Your purpose. Own your own. Own your, your existence. existence. I mean, this is an incredible thing to say to people. Own your existence. It th it thrills me to say that word, those words. And it's what we all need to do and not be shopped around and distracted from who we are. I mean, it's incredible. And that is what you need to do to be an artist. The process of becoming an artist. I have great difficulty with the word artist because people use it left, right, and center, right. and it's misused most of the time. There are very few people who I consider artists. I still am working on becoming an artist, and I probably will to my dying day. So I am uh, I know what that entails, and the discipline, and the whole focus and everything, and the generosity you need to move in a singular fashion towards your, your end, whatever it is you're working for. So, to give, she sees the talent, she sees it. He can't see it, she sees it. She gives him, she mentors him very positively. I don't think death is on her schedule. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, if another part came up, I'm not sure that she wouldn't find a way to do it. You know? <laughs> right. Yes, in the back there, I'll just switch things around. Well, yes. I mean, I never really thought of it that way, but I th for me, one of the most touching moments in the movie, which, you know, just talking about the cats is basically when she says, you know, you're going to have to have to take care of my cats. <laughs> and to me, you know, as a cat owner, I'm just like, oh, God, <laughs> that's that's the moment where my heart always uh, sinks a tiny bit. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, I was wondering about the relationship with your daughter. It was Well, I guess the, the, the move, you know, I never really thought that it needed, I guess I thought that there's enough there, you know, like the, the purpose of her relation, her relationship with her daughter was really kind of secondary to her relationship with Lauren, I guess. So I, I just mm -hmm. felt like it needed to kind of reflect why, why, maybe partially why she had this, some regrets, but I just never felt like it, I needed, or the script needed more. Wasn't there a more in the be at one point? There was the scene where you meet the daughter. There, that was a, 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 a somewhat longer scene, but the, the scene when when you guys dance and oh right, you meet the, that was a longer scene at one point. But right, I kind of felt like I always wanted to just get back to Lauren and Rose. Right, right, right. So, um, yes. Go ahead. Well, I was wondering about the relationship with your daughter. I've also been thinking about the movie 30 years ago, my dinner with Andre, that my friends liked, and, but I found it so artificial. Have you thought about my dinner with Andre? Has my dinner with Andre, yeah, I'm sure people yeah. mentioned that. But, uh. No, uh, my dinner with Andre was like, a, was like a big inspiration for me for mm. this movie. And you know, uh, there, were, there were a couple things. I mean, the first thing is how Louis Maul plays so much against the mirrors, yeah. and sort of like, how do you keep this frame interesting? Mm. Uh, you know, and, and Louis Maul did it. So I sort of stole his yeah. mirror trick. <laughs> and uh, also the difference, uh, the other thing that I really learned from my dinner with Andre is, you know, um, Wally and Andre are actually kind of arguing the whole movie. They're not really getting along. They kind of have different worldviews that are pushing up against each other. And that's the same thing is happening with Lauren and Rose. I mean, they're not just chatting about how much they like each other and how was your day? It was great. How was your, you know, they're, they have diff they have different points of view that are always pushing up against each other. And that's, that was a very kind of deliberate lift from my dinner with Andre. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the back. Yeah. I must say, uh, I shall never look at a creme rocher. <laughs> creme rocher. 
Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I was saying that, that I, actually, yes, it was extremely well written the way you describe the pleasure of a creme brulee. Uh, I've never heard it quite said that way, but it was very accurate. Russell has a very interesting um, relationship with food. <laughs> and in the initial script, some of the dishes that we were going to have to eat were so obscure and so weird, <laughs> I have to say, I really dreaded eating them. I dreaded them. And he gradually made it become a little less, well, I don't know what the cuisine it was, but he, I've never ever heard of things like we were sitting, going to be presented, and I was very squeamish at that point, but it became a funnier and simpler um, mood with the food, because he was a very, tr he loved to try new dishes. <laughs> via Paul and that whole thing. I was just gonna say, I mean, but the thing about the, this is one of Rose's superpowers, you know, like Rose is, is an amazing wordsmith, you know, and she can like, that's why, that's one of her, that's one of her, that's one of her, her strengths as a person. Like she can tell the Bhutan story and just by her power of Scheherazade description, she can make you see it. And that's one thing that great actors can do. Like Jacqueline can do that. You know, she can describe something and tell it to you and tell the story and suddenly you're like, I'm there, you know? And so when she describes, when Rose describes a creme brulee and the crack, right. the heartbeat, <laughs> right. it's like, she's, she's good at that. Rose is good at that. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, uh, yeah. So was this um, location in the restaurant based on any particular place? Was the restaurant based on a real place? It's in yeah, well, I'm asking, yeah. well, no, the the well, the location where we shot was actually like a, an abandoned hair salon. It's like, it's not a <laughs> place. but uh, no, it is. It's it's a it's now a community center. And uh, but the the idea was it had to be a restaurant that it had to be sort of a restaurant that Rose would have conjured, you know. So it had to be colorful and whimsical and magical, and fantastical. I, I, I asked because I was putting myself in the end of the seventh grade, yeah. Yeah, right exactly. here That's in, in the canyon. Yeah. So yeah, the end of the seventh grade feels sort of like that. It's sort of, yeah. What uh -huh. is that? What is the end of the seventh grade? It's a, it's a restaurant oh, in Topanga. Okay. Where uh, is it? <laughs> in Topanga Canyon. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's, it's like 100 feet from where we shot. Yeah, it's very close to where we shot. <laughs> Uh, is it like a landmark place? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. I'll take you there. <laughs> okay, so we have a little follow-up, perhaps. Uh, yes. So, um, first of all, the writing for both the man, the male, and the female character, um, actors are clearly going to want to work with you on, because the writing for an actor is just so rich and respectful and uh, opening up. Um, and you were delightful, sir, um, in your role. But to have.